Well, hello! It's WizardFoo bringing you another game development update with the game Wraithbinder. Um, what I've worked on recently is getting the old move system to work from Songbringer so that I can throw things like in a 3D pattern. See how I'm like throwing a little gray ball? It's supposed to be a grenade. Of course, all the animations and the artwork will get a lot better as the uh, as I actually go and spend some time on it. But um, for now, just having the system be able to work, right? So a move... Man, that is a lot of characters down there. I'm just trying out this new utility to show all the characters I'm pressing. Um, yeah, but so basically, the ball starts at a certain... Uh, Z height and then it has a Z acceleration so it accelerates upwards and then gravity brings it back down and as soon as it hits the ground it explodes. So uh, let's look some look at some of that code and um, then I'll talk about some other things I'm looking to do next. Uh, basically getting that old system to work it, it would required um, refactoring some of the code so that it works with my new V3 which is part of kit Foo, which is a vector 3 um, but it works a little bit differently than the way the Songbringers vectors did. Um, and that's all basically to keep compilation speeds very fast by having simple, smooth, or simple, um, template free, fast headers, minimal headers, you could say. And V3 is also kind of a, a combination of a floating point. It has a Z, every one of the three um, variables x, y, and z have an f function which allows you to get the floating point version but it stores all of its values as integers times a thousand so uh, the floating point 1.0 would be stored as 1000 and uh, and then to get the z the floating point version it just divides whatever integer number it is by a thousand the reason I'm doing that is because this is going to be a multiplayer game so I want to represent all positions ultimately by integers which can uh, not be corrupted by cross-platform data transfer and um, are always the same value on any platform you ever write something on. Integers are safe. They're easy to use. But a floating point value can be slightly different depending on the machine's architecture and the uh, floating point instruction set and things like that. Uh, so anyways, integers are great to use for cross-platform multiplayer. And um, so that's I just had to refactor some code to get that to work. Uh, but I will mention that this whole um, movement system is kind of, oh, it's a little bit unique, you could say. Um, Songbringer, I tried to, to code things in a way that wasn't quite realistic. So physics uh, don't use typical physics equations. Um, the way entities move actually, or physics happens, or acceleration happens is with a, an acceleration factor. So uh, the factor grows over time, right? It grows from zero to one. And then that is applied times the uh, desired speed to give you a current velocity. So basically it's like ramps up your velocity rather than applying an acceleration factor. So it's not like it's it's exponential, it's linear. Um, and a lot of things like that are in Song are, are like that in Songbringer too. There's linear um, turning speeds, there's linear uh, Shoot, I can't even think of more examples right now. But the whole point was to create a unique feel for Songbringer. So I want to bring some of that feel to Wraithbinder. Of course, I want to bring that to all the video games I write. Some sort of something a little bit unique. Some just it's not really unique. You could say that's not really a great word. It's just more, um, I don't know, quirky. You know, it brings in sort of an indie feel and uh, gives me sort of that feeling that I get when I used to play the old Nintendo games. That's what I'm trying to get here. Is um, some simple approach to physics that has a unique feel to it. I guess the unique feel is overall. You take everything you get in the entire video game together and I guess that kind of is something unique. So anyways, um, what I'm, work, I'm gonna work on next, here's some exciting stuff. I'm working on health bars and I'm thinking that maybe they'll actually be like little health rings underneath the player. Um, so that, and then they'll always be, when, when there, whenever there's an, I want to do two things with, accomplish two things with uh, health bars. One is that I want to sh be able to show health of enemies, because I think it's really exciting when you're playing something like a MOBA, and you can see the other person's health, and you know they're almost dead, and you're trying to kill them, and oh, it's so exciting, right? So I want to be able to see other players' health, 
And secondly, I want to easily be able to distinguish other players. Right now, you can see I'm using the same model for all the players. And um, uh, so I want to be able to just make a distinction between players quickly and visually by their health bar color. Um, or maybe the health bar shape to make it uh, um, also work for colorblind players. So I'm thinking that maybe there'll be like a ring underneath the player. And it will be green for anyone that's on your team and red for anyone that's not on your team. And that ring will act like a health bar in the sense that it grows more dull as the player is almost close to death. I'm not sure if that'll be intuitive enough to, to work, but we'll try it out. All right, so um, that's about it for this video. Um, I think I mentioned everything I wanted to mention for now. Yeah, anyways, so that's it for this video. Okay, see ya.